I recently got myself a couple of new pieces of kit for my Osmo Action action camera. The first of these was the small rig uh, case. I really like this case. It's made of machined, it's machined from al aluminium. Uh, uh, swinging in back. It's nice and solid. Uh, it's got a bit more weight than the plastic cases that are available for the Osmo Action. But it seems to be the one with the most functionality. The camera slides in, the back closes down and there are two little knobs here which tighten up. There's a little rubber um, buffer ring inside so everything's nice and secure. The kit comes with an Allen key which allows these to be tightened up. You don't want to do it, overdo it but it's nice and tight, nice and secure. I've got access to all three uh, control knobs. I have a cold shoe on the top and a cold shoe on the side. I have access to the flap which covers the power port, the USB-C socket and the SD card access. I'm able to remove the flap and I use a Sinova microphone adapter. This plugs in, it's, the case is machined to accept the microphone socket and the power socket at the bottom. Along the bottom of the the case there is access to the battery which I don't think any other case available for the Osmo Action provides. The battery therefore can be removed and replaced without having to remove the camera from the uh, from the from the casing. Really good. Along the bottom and along the side of the the case is drilled for there are actually five holes drilled along the bottom for a standard uh, tripod socket and there's one hole for a standard tripod socket, quarter inch socket on the side. And there are also two smaller holes on the side and on the bottom. And these are to take a GoPro, a GoPro prong. And these screw in at the bottom here. The kit is supplied with fixing screws and an Allen key again to tighten it. And uh, these can be fitted really very securely. So that gives a whole range of mounting points. I guess if I've got a moan about this is that on the bottom here when you fitted the prong on the bottom you can't actually use uh, a typical uh, um, tripod socket or you can screw in a tripod socket but tripod mounts come with the, these rotating barrel things which uh, you can't actually get the two in together but you can you've got two sides to mount on. The other feature that comes with is this 52 millimeter threaded uh, filter mount and this fits on the front like so there are screws for attaching it again it can be attached nice and securely and the 52 millimeter thread there are countless 52 millimeter threaded um, filters available whether they be neutral density UV polarizers adjustable po uh, neutral density, a whole range of filters can be fitted onto that. Now I don't actually use that at present so I'm just leaving that off for the moment. So that brings me on to the second piece of kit that I purchased which is also from Small Rig. It's also machined from aluminium, it's got steel bolts on it. A really nice little clamp here. The clamp varies from, I think it takes something like a 15 millimeter diameter uh, tube or even here it can be clamped down onto quite a fine thread and it can be opened up to I think it's 40 millimeters to clamp on. So it's nice and versatile. The clamp is attached to I think they call it is a mini magic ball joint. It's a tripod mount articulated ball joint gadget which again gives all manner of adjustment. So it means that I can screw it into my camera. Once that's into my camera, woo, I can make all manner of adjustments to the angle at which I hold the camera, how it's clamped onto something. I can fit this onto the handlebars, have it angled to the left or to the right. I can turn it back to do a wee little selfie up my nose if I like from the handlebars. I can fit this, I can fit this almost anywhere on the, on the bike. 
so I get a whole variety of different shots. Um, I can use it off the bike as well, um, so I'm able to use it clamped to a, to a tree or a railing for, for a passing shot. Um, or I can even use it just as a handheld little sort of selfie device, which itself is quite useful. So it means that I'm able to use this on my bike with very little mounting hardware carried around and fiddle to fiddle with. So those are the two new pieces of kit that I got. Now I went out for a ride on my bike, just intending to do a 20 minute ride, um, just to try out a few different positions, putting it in the handlebars, mounting it maybe on the, on the back rack, trying different angles of view. Um, and it was a lovely day. And my 20 minute ride turned into, well, it turned into a four and a half hour ride. I went a lot further than I intended to go, but I really enjoyed it. We went all the way down from Livingston, down the A89 path, all the way to Newbridge, and then up by the old railway track, to, which is now a, a shared use path, through Kirkliston into Queen's Ferry. And uh, so I spent a little time in Queen's Ferry having a snack, an ice cream, visited all three bridges that are at Queen's Ferry. There's the fourth, the fourth bridge, which carries the railway, the fourth road bridge, which is now uh, a public transport highway really, and there's the Queen's Ferry Crossing, which is the motorway across the bridge. Uh, I cycled across the bridge and on the way back uh, I met a lady who told me that the pod of dolphins had been spotted in the fourth, just under the, the centre section of the, of the road bridge. So I stopped and I managed to get a little bit of a picture with that. Uh, I tried it handheld with the, with the mount, but uh, the angle of view of the Osmo action is just too wide for that. Uh, I got a slightly better shot using my mobile phone, but th those were the only two cameras that I had with me on the trip. So I've got some footage for you to have a look at. Enjoy. So I'm just on the harbour wall at Queen's Ferry Harbour. I've been watched one of the 200 or so trains that cross the bridge, the fourth bridge every day, crossing the fourth bridge into Dalmeny Station which is the station for Queen's Ferry. I'm going to take a little wander through the town now. It's all granite sets along the high streets. It's a, it's a bit of a nightmare to cycle along, especially with a small wheel Brompton bike. But I'm taking this little, little wander down here to overlook what serves as a beach. You can see the, in the shadow there is the camera mounted on the the mount on the handlebars. Walking along the high street, it's quite quiet today. This used to be two-way traffic, it's only recently been changed to, to one-way traffic, motor traffic. Bicycles are allowed two ways. I find it interesting how the shops in, uh, in Queen's Ferry have changed over the years. They're no longer the traditional serve the community type shops, they're more and more focused on the visitors and uh, cafes galore and an ice cream shop of course so I'm having a double scoop cream egg ice cream it's absolutely delicious it took me a little while to finish it and I was still finishing it as I walked up through one of the back lanes up to the top of Queen's Ferry on my way up to uh, Dalmeny station and uh, from up here at the top you get a great view over the bridges that's the Queen's Ferry crossing in the background, fourth road bridge in the foreground, and turning round to the fourth bridge. And now I'm on the platform at Dalmeny Station. The north end of the platform gives us great view, looking sort of straight along the fourth bridge. So just for the railway aficionados, if there are any watching, this is a six carriage Scottrail class 158 Sprinter train. It'll be a local service going round the Fife Loop. It'll be coming back here in an hour or so, no doubt.
and as that train leaves we can see another train coming in. This is a Scotrail class 170 Turbo Star, probably from Dundee or Aberdeen, passing all the passing right through, not stopping at Dalmeny. So from the station here I'm going to just make my way west along the top of Queen's Ferry until I get to the Forth Road Bridge or the access road to the Forth Road Bridge. This is the National Cycle Network route number one. It's never very sure just which side of the Forth Road Bridge is going to be open. Uh, they usually have one side open and one side closed for some sort of footway work. So I'm hoping that it's the east side that's open and sure enough it is. I've speeded this up two times, it's quite a long way. Uh, unfortunately the height of the guardrail just hides the view of both bridges really, on either side of the Forth Road Bridge. The Forth Road Bridge is now only open to buses, taxis, bicycles and pedestrians. It uh, was originally opened in 1964 and in 2004 it was realised that some of the steel cables that support the bridge were showing signs of corrosion and uh, rather urgently needed to be replaced and the bridge was not capable of taking the, tra the traffic that it was originally, well, that it was now carrying, which is considerably more than what it was designed for. And so the Queen's Ferry crossing uh, was conceived in 2004 and opened in 2017. So we'll come all the way across to the north side of the bridge and over in that promontory just to the left of the, of the carriageway there is a hotel. And what I'm doing is I'm heading down here, getting across the road and round up to that hotel for a view of the Queen's Ferry crossing. Queen's Ferry Crossing has motorway status, whereas the Forth Road Bridge uh, was the A90. It was a trunk road status, uh, so the motor, so the Queen's Ferry Crossing is only open to uh, motor traffic, vehicular traffic. At 1.7 miles or 2.7 kilometres long, it's the longest three-tower cable-stayed bridge in the world. And it's also by far the largest to feature cables which cross mid-span. I'm not sure how clearly that can be seen from, from this viewpoint. I just find the noise of the traffic from the bridge incredible so loud. Right, that's enough of that. Let's get back in the fourth road bridge on the way south. Right, I'm heading south over the fourth road bridge now. But the front rail isn't getting in the way. Nice view. Just been told by someone who's in a pod of dolphins. Spotted. Just this side of the first. It's about halfway along the bridge. So I'll take a look for that. So here we are. I was holding my Osmo Action as a handheld device here, but the wide angle of the lens just doesn't do justice to focusing on the detail. There was a, the pod of dolphins. I've swapped here to my mobile phone and we get a slightly better angle of view. And we can see the dolphins playfully making their way up the, the fourth. They're probably about 100 metres from us. The bridge deck is about 63, 65 metres above the height of the water. 
uh, and these weren't directly below us, so I'm guessing they were somewhere in between 80 and 100 metres away. Heading back south now towards the towards the Queen's Ferry end and uh, onto the viewing deck. This was originally built to view the fourth road bridge, but it now serves as a fantastic viewing deck for all three bridges: the Queen's Ferry crossing, the fourth road bridge, my bike, all design classics, and then the design classic of all, now a, a world heritage site and deservedly so in my view, the fourth bridge. Not incidentally the fourth rail bridge, it is the fourth bridge. There was no other bridge when this was built. So from the last view of the three bridges, here's the Queen's Ferry crossing from the south. And guess what? It's congested. All that traffic queuing up to make its way north. It's not even a, at this time of day, it wasn't even a a busy time of day. So with that in mind, having seen the public transport links over the 4th, the train and the buses and the facility for cycling and walking, I'm making my way across through the back roads towards Winchborough. These are nice and quiet, and they used to be nice and quiet, and suspect that they will become somewhat busier fairly soon. Winchborough is uh, a small town which grew up during the shale mining industry, uh, but nowadays it is a site of massive housing expansion, and what we're passing here is the construction of yet another motorway junction on the M9 motorway. There is a train service, the, the main Glasgow-Edinburgh train, so train line runs right through Winchborough, but rather than build a station for commuters, because this will become a commuter town, they're building another motorway junction just to add to the congestion of traffic heading into Edinburgh. It's not closed. It's just full of the water. Build houses and the motorway junction will follow. Build the motorway junction and the houses will follow. I just wonder how much active travel infrastructure could be built all the way across Scotland for the cost of one motorway junction. But anyway, I'm letting my prejudices get in the way here. I'm heading now in through the old part of Winchborough. On the left there are Miners Rows, which were built uh, to attract miners from other areas of the, the shale mining industry across West Lothian. These were considered to be of a much higher standard than were available in the likes of West Calder and Addy Well and other parts where it was done. The Shale Trail is a recently opened heritage trail uh, between Winchborough and West Calder. It explores the history of shale oil mining through West Lothian which at one time was the world's largest oil producer. It's intended primarily as a walking trail, uh, although it is billed as being suitable for cycling and wheeling. Um, in practice, there are areas of the trail which are just impassable for somebody in, say, a wheelchair or mobility, uh, with mobility needs. Uh, there are parts of it which are really only fit for a uh, mountain bike cycling, but uh, nonetheless there are alternative little loops that you can take to, to bypass those dodgy, as it were, areas. We're passing through the park and where the road there crosses over the Union Canal, we turn left down by the cemetery and just along here there's a little track that takes us down onto the Union Canal towpath.
over on the right there, that hill is a bing or a waste tip. It was one of many waste tips in West Lothian, the Green Dykes bin. This is actually now a scheduled monument, I believe, or it's a, a protected site. And I've left the canal here at Broxburn, coming up onto the A89 uh, cycle path, which I've recorded in several other videos. So I'm going to end the video just here. Thanks for riding with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Ride with me again. Lost in Livy.